Caffeine dehydrates you, and the water undoes that, so we work together. Yeah. All right. So today we're going to look at types of functions. That's not the right pen either. No, not the right pen either. Um, we're going to look also look at the big family of functions. Those of you that walk on to pre-cal after this, they're they also have a family of functions. They also look at nine. There's two family of functions, two function families that we look at that they do not. Is it really two? There should be two. Pretty sure they use nine also. We lose two. There's two of ours that we they don't do, and there's two that they do that we don't. <laughs> I know that there's two or three. I can't remember if they count sine and cosine as different families or not. They really are the same graph. So I would imagine. I know that they do logistics and we don't. Maybe they have 12. That would make sense. But I know we do a step function and they don't. And I can't think of anything else that we do or they don't. So it might be eight. And then they pick up four, one, two. Yeah. I think they have 12 families of functions that we have not. So know that most of these you're going to carry over to future classes. And if you get them, it's going to be a whole lot easier in the future. And they really are like how you are graphing, how you should be able to graph functions in your head. Because especially for this class, there's only nine types of shapes you could make, and they're all going to be variations of them. And we're going to see them a lot, and we're going to make lots of notes. And if we don't finish everything today, we'll do this again tomorrow, and maybe the next day. Not the same stuff, maybe we'll practice it again. I keep missing the arrow. Good morning. I think I'm getting almost everybody here now. All right, this was technically from yesterday, but this is the last stuff I did yesterday, just like right there at the end of class. And I couldn't remember if I actually got to say it and talk about it or not. Um, yes. So I'm not going to do the whole analogy thing here. I'm just going to let you remember. Um, if we have a function and we have the domain and range, I'm going to like go down from the from what I said yesterday to like usefulness here realistically if i have a function and i get to make the domain and range it should at least be on to right that i should at least be able to get that because if i made the range i should and i've limited the range so that like every single number that's in the range is actually part of the function and i kicked everybody that's not then I'm on onto. Onto means that I get, I completely fill up the range. I use all of the range. Well, if I made the range, I should use all of it. Does that make sense? If there's a part I'm not using, I kick it out. So then the only question I have is, is it one to one or not? Because if it is this, then the only question is, is it going to be both one to one or just that? Which just means does every single X only go to one thing? And we have a cool little thing. Uh, we have an easy way to test this. And I have to use my pen. Hopefully, you guys are going to see me here. I don't know if you guys remember this from Algebra One or previous math classes or not. But we had like a function tester. It was like the vertical line test. You with me? If I graphed the function and I held my pencil up straight up and down, and I went through, and if I never hit more than one part of the graph at a time, then it was a function. That makes sense. That means that the X is only going to one place at any point in time, at most one place. So that right there tells me whether it's a function. If it's one to one, then it'll pass a vertical line test. If I a horizontal line test, I can't talk now. If I turn my pen, pencil sideways and every Y only hits one X at a time, then it's then it's both onto and one to one. That makes sense. So this way says function or not, this way says one to one or not. Or realistically, if I'm told it's already told it's a function, I'll go on to both. Because now I've done the second one, so that makes it both. Okay, ish. Don't ever talk to me. All right. 
So, first of all, it's automatically discrete because it's not continuous because it's a bunch of dots. I'm going to go backwards. Some of y'all like going backwards. Right? So if I have to do the domain, and it's a series of dots, right? It says state the domain range of the relation. Do I want to do interval notation or set builder? You guys are allowed to vote too. And by you guys, I'm talking to the people that are on, on the computer. What, when is interval notation going to be short and easy? Is remembering stuff from yesterday. With what? When it's okay, when it's going to be like one thing or right, right? A less, which, how do we know that it's going to be like that? It started with a C. And it would continuous. 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 Oh my lord. <laughs> well, they're really good at this guessing game. I didn't realize I keep stumping you, but I'm going to get you eventually to get it with you, right? If it's continuous, if it starts here, because then it has a starting point and end point, right? And then the interval, then I'll only have one interval. Do I have that here? No, I have a bunch of series of dots. So I'm probably going to want to use set builder. Because if it was interval, I would have domain starting at negative four and ending at negative four. Union starting at negative three and ending at negative three. Starting at zero and ending at zero. Starting at one and ending at one. And starting at three and ending at three. That would be miserable. All right. So if it's not contained in a single piece, if it's not continuous in some way, use set builder. Set builder will be so much nicer. So here's my domain. Any x as long as x equals, and what are my x values? Negative three, negative three, zero. Hold on, I can't write it for you apparently. Okay, zero. One, three. Make sense. There's my domain. What? I was. Are oh, you looking at range? Oh, awesome! You're faster than me. All right, what do we have for range? Negative two, one, negative two. I already did negative two. There's two. There's two. So it's only one number. I'm not like listing out the points. I'm saying, okay, these are the values you can have. So I got negative two. Gone. I have one. Gone. Yeah, I wouldn't list the same number more than once because I'm just saying these are the possibilities. I'm not saying you're going in a certain order or anything like that. Otherwise, the sine wave that goes up and down, up and down, up and down, hits the same exact spots over and over again would be really aggravating. Because I'm like, oh, great. I have negative one an infinite number of times. And negative 0.999999999 an infinite number of times. That would just do it all really fast. So I'm done. Take care of the domain and range. Is it a function? I mean, if you don't want to like go through, basically it's just every single x value was only going to hit one y, right? So negative four is only going to go to one y. It only goes to negative two. Negative three is only going to go to one y. And I'm basically doing the vertical line test, or I'm going to check and make sure that every x value, every x value is only going to go to one place. Is it a function? Mm -hmm. 
Yes, right? Every X only goes to one Y. Is it one to one onto both or neither? Well, with the function, it's not gonna be neither. That's not 100% true. This, if we did the domain and range correct, it's not going to be neither. Hmm? One of those are right. I'm gonna go with one more. I'm gonna go with one to one. You're the sexist. <laughs> <laughs> So this is the vertical, this is the horizontal, this is the, I can't talk, I just can't talk. Again, after I finish my second cup of coffee, I can talk and speak like a normal human being. So this is the vertical line tester. This says, am I a function or not, right? And I told you like, you're gonna have at least onto, if you do the domain and range correctly, and it's a function, it's good. Well, if you, do, if you do the range correctly, it's going to be onto. Because onto just means that every part of the range actually gets used. Right? So don't worry about this neither thing. That's not going to be taken care of. If it is neither, that means you messed up the range. Right? So this, so if I'm at least onto, the only question is, am I going to be, oh, which way, by the way, if I'm onto, that means I can't just be one to one. I'm either going to be onto or both. Right? So then the question is, do I have the one to one thing down? And the one to one tester is to turn your pencil sideways and do the horizontal line test. I never hit more than one point at a time. I do right there, right? Which means I don't have the both. I don't have the one to one part. Because one to one, remember, um, a function says every X is only interested in one Y, right? One to one means every Y only has one X interested in it. That makes sense? But they're both perfectly paired up. And this Y, negative two, has a negative four going after it and a zero. So that makes it only on two. Mm -hmm. That makes sense? And that's a lot to go through. And it's going to get worse. Like there's a lot. If I'm looking at just like classifying and like looking at all the different parts of functions, there's a lot there. I like to tell you it's going to get better. Um, there's a whole section in pre out that's like analyzing functions. And I, I think I had a student once and they got a rap about it, about like all the steps. It's like 13 things you end up having to look for. All right. But if they're all doable, they all kind of build off of each other. And the cool, like it becomes like empowering when you can just look at a function, either graph or just look at its equation and know all those 13, 14 things. So we're gonna get to where we look at them like, oh yeah, that's what they are. We'll move this. Oh, you are here. And we haven't technically done anything new yet. We just really solidified, well, we tried to solidify some things from yesterday. I'm gonna give this to you real quick. It's gonna go out of your head. You're not gonna remember it for a few minutes, but that'll be okay. This vertical line test, going up and down, looking to see, make sure I don't hit a point more than once. That tells you whether it's a function or not. Horizontal tells you whether it's one to one or not, right? This one failed right there. Do this guy, tell me it's a, says it's a function. If you do the range correctly, you're gonna at least have on to. It's going to be on to, which means that everybody in the range gets used. If it passes the horizontal line test, then it's both on to and one to one. All right. This is going to come back to you in like three minutes. Right now, it's going to be awful lot. I don't remember what was next. Oh, yeah. So we're going to fully classify this guy. And we just have a lot of points. Well, it's not a function. Wait, yeah, it's not a function. It is not a function. That is correct. 
Let's get dinner. By the way, if you disagree with anything that's being said, we will discuss why things are. But if you say something and we just accept it, I'm going to assume that you guys all see the same thing and you accept it for the same reason. Then it's also not a one to one. Relation well, if it's not a function, it, can be it can't be one to one. Okay. Yeah. Because the function, because that means that that x is already prepared. Because one to one means everything's just a couple. If you're in there, you only have one partner. Yeah. And in order to fail the function test, you're going to fail one to one test. It could still be onto, because onto just means that the entire range is used. And if I do the range right, it's going to be on to. Right? So every single one is on to. It's going to at least be on to. Uh, the only time you won't is if you are specifically told you have to use this range. So I am, they almost have to cheat you in order to not get on to. So it can't just be one the one that has to be good. Correct. Um, which is why eventually you'll stop asking about the onto thing because like if the it's a thing it's technically there there's a lot of things that mathematicians do because that are ridiculous that don't actually end up being used but like it just solidifies that helps us go forward without by answering a question saying all right we have this definition we're using it and this is why we're going to be doing these other things so we don't actually have to use that definition anymore um like after this chapter, we won't even ask her on to anymore. The only question will be, is it one-to-one -one or not? Does that make sense? Because those are the only two types of functions. Either the function's one-to-one, -one, and we can do lots of stuff with it, or it's not. Um, it becomes technically a thing because of inverses, where you end up where you end up taking domain ranges that you have, and then when you end up changing the function to a new function, um, so the question is going to be whether it actually gets to everywhere or do you have to go back and adjust your domain and range. All right. What's the domain? One, two, three, four, and five. Do we want to do this with interval notation or set builder? Set builder because it's not a continuous line, right? So, and that's literally how you make your decision. I hope. I mean, if someone really wants to see it in the interval, I can do it in the interval. I'm just not going to be happy about it. I'm going to be the person might be unhappy. So, if that's fine. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, right? Mm -hmm. So, any x, as long as x equals one, two, three, four, or five. And since it's not English class, you don't have to do the whole comma, 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 and, or thing. Just make a list. I'm okay with that. What's the range? Two, four, five, eight, ten. Two, four, five, eight, and ten. And I'm gonna do set order again because nobody complained last time. Brace y as long as y equals two, four, eight, next. Oh, five, eight. Five, eight, or ten. And it's on to, right? Everything in the range gets hit. Not a function. We're okay. Yep, 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 yep. yep. All right. I'm going to let you guys lead the way on this one. Why if I didn't let y'all lead the way the way the last time? Oh, I cut off function or relation. Oh, no, I didn't. There's the level over it. Um, that last bottom one is just 824. I think it's, yeah. It's every number tripled. Where those numbers triple might be a better way of putting it.
You guys are allowed to start without me. A and B. If you need help, you can let me know. If you did the if you did the range correctly, it's going to be on two. All right. Well, how do you know? One to one means every single x, each x only goes to one line, so you don't have the same x value up there going to multiple places. Yeah. It didn't mean. Yeah. It's Yeah, so it has to be onto because every y value is going to be in the list. Onto means, so like I always think of this way the x's are the guys, because the guys are dogs, they have the x's. The y's are the girls, right? Right? So onto means every girl in the list is being used. Most of the word choice, and I didn't like think about how that like worked, but I'm just going with it now. <laughs> right? So they're all in there, they're all part of the range. And if I write the range correctly, it's gonna be on to because I'm only gonna look at the girls that are on the list. One to one means every guy that does them is only interested in one girl. And that girl is interested in that guy. Does that make sense? Um if, if this guy was here and he was interested in both of those, well, that would not be a function because he's going to two different girls, right? But if this guy's here and this guy's here and they are both interested in that same girl, that would also not be a function because that girl's not, that girl then has the decision to make. So it's not one to one means both directions of perfect couples. Does that make sense? On to means every girl has somebody that's interested in them. What both means that they are also interested in only one guy. Does that make sense? So it ends up working out. One to one is like, boom, they're all matched up perfectly. No fights over who's going to be dancing with who. On to just means everybody's on the dance floor and getting used in some way, or is you know, not there moving. There's nobody left off, left behind. So one, two axes could be going to one line and talking to it? Yes. In fact, they all could be looking at the same line. It could be four, two, five, two, six, two. Everybody could be going to the exact same line. Does that make sense? And then it's on to. I want to leave that example alone now. I would. Getting recorded and everything. I'm gonna get fired. I didn't even say anything technically wrong in the math world. No, not literally. Not literally. It's just I was running with an analogy and then it went in the wrong direction that I didn't foresee because I was focused on the math, so I didn't think about the, the analogy side of it. I was just thinking about the math side of it because I'm that type of math geek that will run with the analogy, only thinking about how things work mathematically. Well, and then after it's over, then I think about what I actually said. You know, like, <laughs> you have two people that love each other very much. <laughs> All right. So what's the delay? Uh, and four. Four, uh, five, six, seven, eight. Definitely. There's lots of ways I could write that, but probably the easiest, I guess, like some fancy ways I could write that, but honestly, the easiest way is just to list it out. You're welcome to try to be fancy, but don't mess it up because if you try to be fancy and then you mess it up, it would not be fun. 
because I'll point out numbers that are not part of your domain that you said are. So x equals four, five, six, seven, and eight. What's our range? Yep. Why did you just jump on me? Look at that. Stop. Stop moving. 12, 15, 18, 21, and 24. Is it a function? Yes. Yes. Oh, somebody's coming back. Um, is it one to one? Oh, we'll start here. Is it on to? Yeah. Yeah, they're all going to be on to. If I did that right, it's going to be on to. Is it one to one? Yes. Yes. If every single y, if I look at the y value, I can find out exactly which x it came from. That makes sense. And that's usually just the test because if I got all down to where it's a function, function means I know where all these guys are going. One to one means I know where all of these numbers came from. I'm saying this in lots of different ways. All you have to do is if you can think about it in one way that works, think about it in that one way. I will throw a whole bunch of like true equivalent ideas at you, hoping that something clicks in your head. When you said why you could trace it back, what do you mean? Do you mean by? So like if I said that my y value was 12, yeah, you could figure out exactly which x that came from. Well, yeah, it says four right there. But like, but like so like, here's what I mean. So let's say the 21 wasn't there. Now, if I say this is 12, you don't know which X that came from. Because uh, it could have come from the 4 or the 7. Does that make sense? Okay. That yes. makes it not one to one. Okay. Right? But as long as I look at each Y value and I'm like, oh, yeah, it had to come from that X. That, then you're going to have that one to oneness. Sure. What if there's like three twos in the X? Would that be a relation? Typically, because that means that that's that number two is going to be going to a three different spots. Yeah, you're always going to at least have a relation because even functions are relations. So the thing is, function means one X per number. You tell not the way that sounded. Each X goes to one number. The way I said that made it sound like the numbers were uh -huh. drawing to the X's and that's backwards. Mm -hmm. All right. I think we've got that. I don't know if you guys got that, but they seem to. Oh, yay. We're back to FX again. Whoa. <laughs> mm. Function notation is awesome. Fun when they first taught it. Probably because our teachers were horrendous at teaching it. Maybe. I have a good time. So, this is the name that f of x is a more is a more like proper and specific way of saying the range or the y values, the results. Okay, it's the actual function. The function is the mathematical rule, right? And it tells us lots of stuff. So f of x means the, the function name is f. It could also be g of x, it could be h of x, it could be j, whatever letter of x actually it could be like s of t. That's another one, that's a position motion, right? Whatever is in front of the parentheses, I'm trying to think of all the things that I've seen that are wrong. That's not multiplication. It has now become a function thing, like it's a set of rules. So first it tells you the name of the function, which is useful because if you had a systems of equations, you mean y equals this, y equals x, y equals this. 
it'd be really hard to know which one we're dealing with. So this is useful because then I can name different Y values without having to get to a ton of subscripts. Does that make sense? But it doesn't have to be F, it can be literally any letter. I will, as I make multiple functions in a problem, I will give them different names. Usually nice stuff, like if I wanna know the profit, I'll make it P of X. Or if it's based off time, I'll make it prof P of T. Um, if I wanna find revenue, I'll use R. Does that make sense? Like it's handy because I'm not locked into Y, right? I can use any letter and it usually will make sense because you know, you know me, there's gonna be lots of word problems eventually. In here, it tells you which letter is a variable. That is really useful because y'all remember like y equals mx plus b and how are you supposed to know which one is going to be a number which one's going to be the variable. Okay, there's a reason why you know, but you probably don't know. Front half of the alphabet means it's a number, the second half of the alphabet is for variables, just so you know, that's why we use x. Y equals mx plus b, m and b. Oh, no, 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 I caught that, but why did our teachers never tell us that? I guess. About the variable. Right, you're gonna be they're helpful. A lot of them actually don't know. I have really good math teachers most of my life. I also had some really bad math teachers, but I had like some really, really, even like in college, I had some really, really awesome math teachers. Oh, you mean like, oh, you mean like that one teacher that you, that you spied it out of? Just that was not one of the really awesome math teachers. I had, I had some on the other end also, but like some, I had like some really, really good math teachers that where like their minds were boggled by the fact that other teachers weren't like explaining all this stuff. Sounds like you. But yeah, but like a math, a math textbook, if you ever see like a math formula, anything from the front half of the alphabet, A through M, is gonna stand for a number that you're gonna have in the formula that you plug in. Anything N to Z is gonna stand for a variable. That's gonna be something that's gonna be changing as things go on. It's like a rule. In math textbooks, like if your first name is a doctor and you're talking about math, you follow that rule at all the times. If your first name's not a doctor when it comes to math, then there's a chance that you don't know that rule. All right, so this tells me the variable where it's coming, what to look for. And then the other part is what the actual rule is, right? So if I wanted to like write 3x plus 1, I could just write f of x. It's really, really handy, especially when it comes down to like writing ordered pairs and all that good stuff. Because this is the x value, that's the y, right? And I can, instead of writing, remember, most of math, most of math notation is about using as little space or writing as little as possible. Deep down inside, a lot of math people are lazy, which is and that's what theorems are. They're like, I've already solved this once. I don't want to solve it anymore. Look, this is always going to work. Be done with it. That's literally what that is. Like, that's like, I don't want to solve. I don't want to keep proving that these two triangles are the same. I, if I have the hypotenuse in the leg, the two triangles are going to be the same. No, no, you need to know how to do it. No, 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 no that's what the, that's where the theorem came from. Because someone was like, yeah, I don't want to do this again. So I was like, yeah, like, look, instead of doing this one, he had one problem of two triangles. And he's like, look, the hypotenuse and the leg are the same. Oh, wait a second. If the hypotenuse and the leg are always the same, these two triangles will always be the same. So I'm going to quit solving from that part. So he would get to find, just show that the hypotenuse leg were the same, but boom, now the triangles are equal. I was told one point on your no shortcuts in math. Was that from Ms. McElroy? I don't remember who. I just know that I've been told that and that I better, you know, know how to do it because if I don't know how to do it, then, mm -hmm. you know, no algebra problem. two, it's going to be a world of hurt. And guess what? Math <laughs> is shortcuts. That's the question. I'm just letting you know, like, that's what math is. Uh, um, <laughs> Because well, I use shortcuts. <laughs> but like math, math is shortcuts. And Adding and subtracting, way. like math started way back when with like how many mammoths have we killed this week? And then they start counting, right? Or they're counting like their plants that are growing. Addition, subtraction was, you know what? You count those, you count those. We don't need to all count all of them. And we'll just add them together. 
That's a shortcut for counting. That's what adding and subtracting is. How many do we lose? We'll subtract those away. And then multiplication division is a shortcut for adding and subtracting. It's like, look, I keep adding threes. How many threes did we add? We added six of them. Well, that's just 18. To make like that's that's just a shortcut. Every all of these, every single operation is a shortcut. Math is shortcuts. Just like this, someone was like gotten tired of y equals 3x plus 1 and being told let y equal 6. Let y equal 6 is a lot to write down if you love shortcuts. Say, so like, why don't we just write that says, sorry, about x equals 6. That says put six in place of x into the f function and tell me what you get. Does that make sense? Like all it is is it's way to shorten down the directions and tell you exactly what they do. And in this case, what would I have? If I let x equal six. Oh, you have 19. 19. As opposed to y equals three x plus one, let x equal six. Right? That's what the directions would say. And then you would have to go in and write my point. Sit. You had to write x equals 6, y equals 19, and have that. Right? Which hopefully you found the right y because it could be a whole long list of y's. Whereas this, all of that is right there. And I know the point. The point, if I'm like trying to graph it, the point is 619. It still goes x, y order. So I have everything I want conveniently. Function notation is a convenient thing. It's not a pain. It's not scary. It's not worse. It is a shortcut and it's going to save you space and time. So question, like back to the actual problem though. So you got 11 because there can't be a negative? Because that's three times, times negative, negative four, which is negative 12, and then plus one, which is negative 11, but he, he got a positive 11. Is that right? Is it um, supposed to be like, uh, what is that, an absolute value? No, I'm putting it right there. It's negative 11. I don't know what they were doing. It may not have copied over. Sometimes when I copy things from other places, I'll lose part, or Maybe I wasn't that caring about that part because I wasn't. I was rooting for something that had this in it. Um, it should be negative 11. F of negative 4 is negative 11. That's how that graph moves, anyways. Yeah, it'd be down there. Good catch. You were actually reading stuff like all the details and stuff. Good. So, yeah, so if I wanted to write this function hits 2, 7. I could just write. Now that technically is more than the point, but this also lets me know where it came from, which function I'm looking at. Whereas if I just had a point, I then have to go match it to that equation. Notice function notation becomes more useful the more stuff you have going on. Right? It, if we only had one function at a time and it was either y equals or f of x equals, I understand though why would we have this? But you're getting to the stage where you might have a problem where you have four or five things going on, and you might have F, G, H, and J. You don't want to have four or five Ys be in the middle of a problem like, oh, wait, now which Y did that one come from? They're all the same, but they're all different. Great. Yes. That makes sense. So that's it, it's got a few good advantages. All right. We're gonna go. I think we're gonna be evaluating something, just putting putting plugging things in. So here's four. Um, no, don't just tell you what the variable is. I'm gonna do. We'll do one or two of them. You guys can do the others. So like here, I would just g of seven. And it's also kind of nice. Like literally, when I write the left side, I'm telling exactly what I did. I took g and I put a seven in place of the variable. Make like sense. This is going to be a really big advance. We're going to put functions in place of other ones later on. It'll be tricky. So, where I had the variable, I put in a seven. Step by 
next step. You all okay with that? So F, so G of seven is 10. It also hits the point seven ten. I already know all of that stuff in order. Um, do you guys get to pick which of the other three do you want me to do in front of you? The one right below it. Okay. Actually, I'll pick that one. It's the next scariest looking one. So now my four is jumping around. G of negative seven. I keep going through in the settings and turning off different notifications of things, but I can never seem to find whatever it is that's actually getting me. Colors. You like okay, so far I just put negative seven in place of the every single X I saw. So G of negative seven. Negative seven squared is 49, because negative seven times negative seven is 49, times two is 98. I said it like a question. It wasn't really a question. Negative four, negative seven is 28. I think that's right. You get the other two. G five. You guys are right, right, the right side. Oh, something else is good. He says I want to get on some people. I want to knock things out. Oh, that purple song? It doesn't show up very well, camera-wise. Um, yeah, yeah, I saw the song come out. It's supposed to get sunny, like by lunchtime, and then be sunny the rest of the day. Yeah, someone. I don't know if I have more of those. I think that I do. Make sure you're doing this. You get like the status of the DA. This thing is Do I get to keep this? Sure. What? Love you. You're crazy, bitch. I'm never losing this. Do I? 
Okay, I don't know where you've been, but it's not where I've been. Favorites in any way. I don't care about playing favorites. You gave me the old, the decrepit one. <laughs> like, do you see? Oh, they're all old and decrepit. Yeah. I got like Amazon. I bought like a, you could get like a five or 10 pound box of like misprinted pens that were all like this style. <laughs> it for like really cheap. <laughs> I thought the other one was like $15. Oh, if you want to get them like where they're like printed like, right. They're, like, printed, like right stuff. They're they're expensive. Oh yeah. But mom. these are all ones that they messed up. Oh. Like they, usually they just printed something wrong. Or um, my wife every time I buy a box of these, my wife will go through and look for ones that like had wedding announcements on them. Because then she's like, failed marriage. I'll take this one. <laughs> <laughs> but she doesn't mean the things they got called off. So like, but like you'll see like a lot of like you know celebrating blah 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 love whatever forever. And like everything looks good on it, and then my wife will think that's awesome. But like this one right here got all messed up the printing in some way. Sometimes yes. it prints off the thing, but like it becomes like really, really cheap because they're just, you they have to get rid, get rid of them. And you can buy them by the pound. I so you'll get like a box that's just stacked with like all different types. Some of them are like really, really nice, some of them, but they're all like at least this quality. I think you married the right person there. Yeah, she has some oh, like same Oh, it likes working with this thing. thing. Yeah. It never let it never lets me write right with anything else. So if I put a six in here, the absolute value of six is six times three is eighteen. Yeah. Minus two is sixteen, right? Okay. Here, I'll put a five. That's fifteen minus three is just twelve. Y'all are okay with those? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys didn't show up like physically in class, so you missed out on getting free pens. Eight. Listen, I know how to do a simple subtraction, I promise. Why do you sound like Kurt? Sit up. <laughs> <laughs> I do what I want. Everybody's good? Yeah. This seems fairly simple. Good. Oh, never mind, actually, this is really difficult. Yeah. I'm having a tough time understanding. Yeah, you should go back. All right, now we're looking. We're gonna look at the family of functions. Uh, There's nine of them. You want to make notes about them? You, oh, I almost forgot to sign in. Yes, you, you literally forgot halfway through. <laughs> as long as I stay signed in, it'll send me a copy of everything. So like as long as sometime during the class you remember to sign in for notes, you'll get the notes. Oh. Question. I know this is very off topic. I saw somebody last weekend selling Girl Scout cookies outside the auto zone in Elgin. Not me. That wasn't your gang? Okay. No. Yeah, was... last this past weekend they were at uh my group was at Chick-fil-A and Lowe's. I say like my group, like what's my group? My <laughs> wife's group. Was it Chick fil A and Lowe's? Well, we had just gotten like munchies from Food Line, so I was really tempted to like stick my head out the window. This is cool. Yeah, the Food Line in Elgin. Oh, okay. yeah, it's Girl Scout cookies. Oh, 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 they're going to be all over the place at different times. Okay. It, was, it was literally like actually raining and it was 30 degrees. I was like, y'all have fun. Yeah. I actually did that at one point. Oh, yeah, I'm fine. And now I can wear it. I've never been a Girl Scout. No, I. I on the other hand, my son and I were out like collecting food for United Way in the rain and all that. That was our fun. Thing. Yes, I've, I've sold popcorn in the rain. Oh, but it was warm. And then I. Oh, warm rain. Camp car. Yeah. Started and then uh, if you remember where you, um, the first weekend, you go around the houses and you just tie the bags around the door yeah. handles. And then like next month, you go back and you collect it all. Yeah. When we went and collected it, it was raining. 
that's so. Everything yes. Sucks in the Every is almost. There's no fun part of any of that stuff. I mean, yeah. I, I enjoy the rain if it's warm, but I was also yeah. stepping in a lot of puddles. Oh. And so, yeah, my feet. My, my favorite part about the whole food collection thing is we always have, like, our troop police always has, like, a contest to see what's the oldest thing that we got. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, okay. Which of this is I've, the I've won the prediction twice, but, like, oh, was it last year? So one or two years ago, we got something from the 1990s that expired in the 1990s, and that was, like, impressive. We were like, no. this thing is, like, more than 20 years old. No, <laughs> this thing went bad more than 20 years ago. Why do they still have it? Because it's canned goods. Canned goods. Yeah, it was been... even past the expiration date. You'd be surprised. Yeah, but this is there again, 1990. Yeah, that's that's. Yeah, Apparently, that's Twinkies is the only thing that will never go bad in an apocalypse. Yeah, it was it was interesting. All right, so we're getting ready to look at the family of functions. You want to make like a quick sketch in notes, or you'll see this quick sketch and like actually go back and look at it um every year before this year i would give a weekly test on the family of functions last year quarantine kids killed me because i was like you can literally just have the nine questions right there in front of you and just boom 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 it's not like learning anything you could legitimately just google the answers so you would have to, like you could literally just have like your one note sheet take it from the side of your wall and you make a hundred so I haven't figured out how to deal with that whole thing with the virtual stuff. It's really, really important. I need to find some way to make you, because like there's not a whole lot to do with it. You have to at least study and memorize them and be able to recognize them. Recognizing them is a big thing. Like if I say, hey, we have y equals x, or we have f x equals x squared, you have to in your mind already know the basic shape of how that looks, which by the way is like this, All right? Um, because if you can get the family of the, these nine shapes down and like know them, doesn't matter what function I give you, we can already look at it and know what the graph looks like. And you won't need your calculators for like any graphing stuff. It'll just be like for dealing with ugly numbers, right? You can become the calculator. <laughs> My dad is the calculator. Yes, I'm showing you how. It's not like, it's not advanced math. It starts with knowing these nine functions and knowing what they look like. All right, so be prepared. The first one is a linear function, f of x equals x. All right, by the way, all of these, if you ever want to change them, it's just anything other than multiplication, division, adding, and subtracting. If I, these are all different in some way. So this could be any number, mx plus b, any number being multiplied, added, or subtracted to that x. It's going to be a line. They all start off being this basic line that goes directly like that. 45 degree angle going up and down that way. All right. Um, these three things are kind of important to note. We're going to talk about other things too. Um, the y-intercept, it goes right through the origin. So it hits zero, zero. Its domain is all real numbers. Right? Its range is all real numbers. Oh, I do try to light set code or I don't think y'all can tell. That's kind of my default moment. If you want an interval. Negative infinity to positive infinity. We got in the habit of doing set builder when we had those ones that were not continuous. Mm -hmm. You're there. Um, it is both on two and one to one. That's kind of nice to know. Yep. It's also odd, but we'll talk about that in a second. Right? Every, every Y gets used, so it's got the on two thing. Every x, every y comes from only one x, right? If I told you that my y value was two, you know what x value was, right? It passes 
you want to do it graphically, if it passes the vertical line test, it's a function, always will pass the vertical. It passes the horizontal line test automatically. Um, maybe it's the constant function. Uh, there's a bunch of things that freak out, pulls in, it's out. All right, so boom, anything that's linear, y'all get linear. That was like a big portion of algebra one. It's just an X being added or multiplied, it's divided or subtracted by a number. The rate is good. No, no comments anywhere, so I'm going to move on. And anyone who's all good time wise. If I go fast, if I go too fast, let me know. The next one is absolute value. <laughs> So I've already kind of seen this at some point before. Yeah. It makes a big V. Would this still be zero, zero? The y-intercept is still, it goes, hits the origin. A lot of these are going to hit the origin and be zero, zero. Um, which looks like an owl face to me somehow. I don't know. It's, it's, it's an owl. What? The origin. Oh, it's because of the big eyes. Yeah. And then the nose pointing over a little bit. Yeah. Um, I thought you were talking about the, the angle and the graph. I was like, I mean, yeah, if you do want to move it. Yeah, we could make it into a bird beak or something, I guess. All right. Domain's going to be all real numbers. Or domain negative infinity to positive infinity. Range is not all real numbers. What's the range going to be? No, it doesn't go to negative anything. What's the bottom of the graph? Zero. So the range, does it hit zero? It does, so it gets corners and then goes all the way up to infinity. The range is y is greater than or equal to zero. Right? It's on to. Is it one to one? No. No. Because if I tell you that y was one, you don't know which x it came from. It could have been negative one or negative or positive one. Not one to one. Make sense? Open. Yep. Good. That's two down, right? Yeah. We might not get you all of them today. We'll see. Oh, oh my the, god, what? The greatest integer function, it's also called a step function, is really like cool. It is kind of looks like a, if you're playing like a video game, you have little guys trying to jump from one level to the next. Come on. That would work, right? It's got little floating steps. Um, I was actually clicking on that, it doesn't actually there. It's technically the greatest integer that is less than x. That is, sorry, that is less than or equal to x. So at zero, I'm zero. This is actually an open circle. Just ah. Oh. I think it was like that because I was actually sitting on it at the time. Um, this is a closed circle. This is an open circle. This is a closed circle. Come on. It does not always like dots. Believe it or not, this is really, really useful if you ever have something that can't, uh, where you don't want decimals or fractions to show up. Like if you're doing a, I can't remember the last time I've used one of these in the real world. Oh, I know there was like a challenge question, like creating calendars mathematically so you could just make a calendar anytime the teacher of the past and have it just pop repopulate automatically. Well, getting the formula and stuff, a little bit of work. The hardest part is 
you don't want it to pop up with like a 2.4 or 2.5. You need whole numbers because you want dates to move to complete days of the week, right? So you would use it anytime you need to kick out and not round to the closest, but kick out decimals and fractions, you can use a greatest integer function, which will literally just set, say, you know, X is traveling along, but I'm going to hang out here. I'm going to hang out here until you get to be a whole other number. And then once X, so if X is like 0.1, you're still here at zero. If it's 0.4, you're still at zero. 0.5, you're still at zero. 0.9999, you're still at zero. And then it gets up to one. And this is okay. Now I'm ready to go with you. And it goes up to one. And then it just hangs out at one for a long time. It's really kind of nip, nifty, interesting. There's also a least integer that's greater. That's what I also call a floor function, which basically tells me to round down. That's another way of thinking of it. It's always, you take the number, just round down. You go down. You cut off all decimals. That makes sense? Um, there's also one that's round up. That's a ceiling function. That's you build up at all times. You round up no matter what. Which is kind of, but makes sense, right? Boom. It's on the floor. You round down. It's on the ceiling. You round up. We're not going to use it a lot. But in like the real, if you're ever using, trying to like, if you're ever trying to create a program that fits the real world and you could put partial things in, but you don't want any decimals or fractions to come out, keep in mind step functions because they are really, really useful for that. It's y-intercept. You don't know what it is? I hit the... I lost y'all already. There's five of y'all, and I've already lost you. One people's drawing. Oh, one intercept is zero, zero. I mean, we can honestly just skip the domain and range because we know it's all on two and one to one. It is on two, it's not one to one. Oh, whoa, wait a minute. That's cat. How? <laughs> there's two x there's two x's there's an infinite number of x's everything on zero there's two points on there's if i tell you that the y is right? zero oh. you have a clue what x is <laughs> i'm tripping what? there's a whole bunch of x's trying to get y to be zero Dang. so I'm, it is i was thinking of something else not one of one <laughs> It is a function, though. All of these are functions, so they're at least going to be on uh, the domain. Believe it or not, even though the thing looks like it's all jumpy, it's all real numbers. It can use any x or interval notation here. I do not want to do interval notation for the range. At all. What type of numbers do I get out of this? A lot. I get a lot. I get all types of numbers. Yeah. You don't want to double. Every y value is what? One. You say one. Up one. What type of numbers are they? Numbers. They are real numbers. Good. So it was point eight nine seven six five four eight. But I couldn't get that number there. What? This guy's not a whole number. That's negative two. It's what you meant, not what you said. What's the word for those numbers? They could be negative, they could be positive, but they don't have decimals on them. It starts with an I and it ends with integers. <laughs> I got the, the integers, right? It, it's going to be anything. That's just if I cut off all the decimals and fraction stuff, I have integers. So set builder is nice because there's a symbol for integers. It's a double stem Z. I made it really, really big just so you can see it more. I would not want to do that in set builder. Because I'd have to write from negative two to negative two, 
u from negative one to negative one, u from zero to zero, u, and then I have to do dot, dot, dot that way, because it always goes forever lower than that, and dot, 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 dot that way, and I have to do like at least three things in order to make a pattern. And it just, it gets ugly. Because it's an infinite number of pieces. I never stop having pieces. That can be aggravating. And with set builder, it really is just as long as Y is an integer. So remember when I said, hey, when one of them is really, really long and ugly, the other one's usually really short. Perfect example here. Okay, ish. We're gonna go back to these and like fix them once we see something else. Once they fix them, we're gonna add one thing. You should be on the next page. Are y'all on the next page? Yeah, yeah. Why do you hate me? Because he doesn't have to. Hold on. Come on, man. I'm trying to do. I'm this. trying to get this page to look. I'm trying to do my man. Well, cubic function. That's the board. That's Picasso's function. Well, you know what? I think the board's trying to say that we're done a few minutes early. We are not done that many minutes early. What? It's only 15 minutes early? <laughs> it's only 15. Yeah. You have two minutes to get in the fix. <laughs> like, I need to actually see it. So, the next one is a quadratic function. I know what it looks like. Oh, we like, see that. You just see it. You just see it. You just see it. It's not going to load anytime soon. Hopefully, the internet went out. <laughs> No, I didn't. no, this board has the weakest internet connection <laughs> or uses the weakest. Bro, if you want, I'll RKO it for you and make them get you in there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to have to turn off the camera though first. So, so, quadratic function looks like this. Oh, it's what? And it's f of x. It says the app can't really <laughs> equals x squared. Yeah, I'll give it a moment. All right? No, no. you got a dinosaur now, boy. <laughs> <laughs> the y intercept right here, and it hits the origin. All right? Um, looks like that. Yeah. Domain, it's going to hit all real numbers. Your x's can be anything. All right. It doesn't matter what number you give me, I can square it. Or if I want set over, if I want interval notation, domain, it goes from negative infinity all the way, all the way, it goes from negative infinity all the way to infinity. Why, why can I do all of these? Do you really want to write all the numbers? <laughs> all the numbers. Like, what are there? Fake numbers? They're the imaginary. The fake numbers yes, out there? Imaginary numbers. We're going to have, we're going to talk about. Now, you lucked out because my class spends more time on imaginary numbers than all the other classes. Exactly. When I say my class, I mean my Algebra 2 class spends more time on imaginary numbers than the other Algebra 2 classes mm -hmm. because, unlike the other teachers, like, I understand that imaginary numbers are like real things. They're just not called real. And a lot of math, math teachers which, just do their best to gloss over them. Which algebra two? Any of them. This one. I Why am, this one? No. I have the algebra two teacher at the school that loves imaginary numbers. Listen, I'm fine. With I'm this. still wrapping my head around the concept that imaginary numbers you. exist. They're real things. It's not. 
Just we'll like, we'll talk about how badly numbers are named. It's like, like negative numbers are not bad frames. things. They sound negative. They're not bad things. They're just the opposite direction. But what's an imaginary number? Well, they just they go in a different they go in a different direction than the real number. Real numbers work like on a flat plane, mm -hmm. like when we're graphing, they're flat right there. Imaginary numbers come out. Mm -hmm. That's all. They go in a different direction. They do some really cool, interesting stuff with the flat plane when they because they can move out. That's all. They're not scary or difficult. A lot of people make them into scary, difficult things. A lot of teachers make them into scary, difficult things, which makes students think that they're scary, or difficult. They're not. And we know that they're like real things because they like really big and deep, like they're a big deal of electricity. Electricity was also considered magic at one point in time. They're as magical and not real as electricity is. Yeah, like back then and all that stuff. Like magic. And people are like, electricity can't blow through this thing and then like make that thing but That's about as scary and weird as they are. I mean, literally not, and literally not even 100 years later. There goes the seven witch trials. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's look at the range. What's the range for this thing? <laughs> a lot. It, they're all going to be a lot. What y values can I have on this? All of them. <laughs> Not all real numbers. All of them. Ah, you please. You just all of them. Remember, the range is how high and low it goes. How low does that graph go? <laughs> zero. Down to zero. And where does it go from there? Up. Up. So anything greater or equal to zero. Or it starts at zero, it touches it, so it gets corners, and goes up to infinity. If it hits rock flat, you can only go upward from there, even if it Correct. hits backwards. It's a squaring thing, right? Um, you, can, you can always go up from rock cloud. Even if it's on to it, because now I've reduced my range, right? No. Yes, I've kicked out all the negative numbers. No, so. no, 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 not what you said, what she said. Oh, even okay. if you're going backwards, like, heck no. Even if you're going, going backwards. It's on to, is it one to one? Oh, no. no. Yes, yeah, no, no, uh -uh. no. Not because one to one. If you would put dots, which brings the roll backwards. You, you want to play me a dinosaur game? See who can get the best score? No. Come on, man. I'm not good. It, oh, so you're scared. So you're scared. I'm, not, I'm just letting you know that I'm not good. Like, what you, me scoring over 4,000 is like rare. Really? Yes. Dude, it's not going to load. This thing is not going to load. Y'all got quadratic function? Mm -hmm. um, put yes. down the stuff you put down all the details you need on your screen because it's going to work on your screen even if it's not working on my screen. Coach, you might just want to exit out of that. It's because it's not going to load. Oh, it doesn't matter. Okay. I can leave it up. It'll be fine. It's not going to, if it's not loading, it's not using anything that I'm needing anymore. I was about to say, he has what we call it after this, anyways. Yeah, I have time for it to work. It's in work. It's in work. All right, is everybody okay ish? Uh, almost. I mean, I'm still in pen. This is a bad idea. This is a bad idea. Yeah, if you could stop it, that would be marvelous. <laughs> marvelous. Oh, I didn't have coffee. I broke my thing. <laughs> it was only for a second. I fixed it. You got a little jam. You know what I mean? You look like here. Anyway, we're not, we're not going to have all the reasons why we can't do things. All right, y'all okay with that one? Everybody has it? A lot of people are not writing things down. They're going to really hate when they see my notes later on and find out that. I went to the I'm shop board. I'm gonna see if I can navigate this myself. Where are we? You can't just quit. 
The cubic function. No. Oh, you moved your hand. Let's go. Yeah. I, well, that board isn't in charge of anything. That board is just like listening to what I tell you. You need it's a monitor. It's not a board. It's a monitor. Correct. It's acting like a monitor. Well, it's just look. It's acting like a student computer is what it's doing. Well, any cool house, hey. All right, so the cubic function, kind of like that, got carried away a little bit. Uh, f of x equals x cubed. Right. It also hits the origin. Not all of them hit the origin, by the way. A lot of them do, right? But it also goes right through there. So it's y intercept. Oh, is zero zero. The domain, all real numbers. Again, not all of them are all real numbers. Almost all of them. Uh, the most common domain is going to be all real numbers. There's a no square root function. It's just uh, x is greater than or equal to zero. And I think all the other ones that we have in this class are all real numbers. <laughs> yep. Um, the range is typically going to be either all real numbers or all the positives. I think those are the only two ranges we get. So, like, you're not like limited. There's a lot to remember, but there's a lot of the stuff is the same, if that makes any sense. So, we go from negative infinity to positive infinity for the domain, or x as long as x is real. Oh, except for the whole integer thing. Step function is really weird. Okay, he has the special range. This guy's range, it goes all the way down and all the way up. So the range is all real numbers. Why do I keep drawing an eight instead of an infinity? <laughs> it happens. I had um, no. in my calculus class, there's a girl that every single infinity sign was an alpha symbol. She could never get her second loop to close, ever. Oh, yeah. Which got difficult when we started having alpha as a set variable. Because we were doing things where like, you'd actually do some math with infinity, and we'd do some things where alpha was part of our stuff. And you'd like, you'd look at her nose to try to like, figure out what's going on because you're a slow writer, because at one point I was a slow writer. And I'd be like, and then I looked like, that's not supposed to be alpha. And she's like, that's not alpha, that's infinity. I'm like, but that looks exactly the same. And she's like, yeah, I do that. It's tough out here. Um, it's on two, of course. We all are, right? Is it one-to-one? -one? Uh, yes. Yes, it is. It gets really close in here. If you see it on the screen, it looks like it's almost getting in there, but it actually never goes flat. It gets really, really close to flat. And then it gets really, really close to flat here, but it never actually fully flattens out. So it is on to one and one to one. Easy. That is really cool and important. And we're gonna see how far we can get before the bell rings. Nope. Nope, gonna have to shut her down. Uh, yeah, it's cloud unfortunate. Wait, did I say I did see because I'm a smart person. Oh, that's cool. What? My computer's not charging anymore. You know, you should think about getting an Ethernet. It's not going to help me charge. It wouldn't help you charge. I'm talking about your internet. Square root function. Yeah, I actually thought about trying to see if I can bribe the text into hardwiring my board. <sighs> I mean, where's the rabbit? Tell me you won't give me any more problems with it. In the ceiling. Ooh. Dude, you're telling me you can't use it. Hard I might have a board that's long enough at my just I just might have a board that's long enough on my own. Are you telling me you can't just plug it in here, loop it that way, <laughs> cut a hole? Drop it down. Just gotta, just gotta I hadn't thought about doing it myself. myself. Bro, I will do it. But, like, I literally might already like have everything I need just, just go ahead. Exactly. I swear, if I come in tomorrow and you have it, 
that would be kind of cool. All right, square root function. No, you can. I don't know why I gave you the idea. I want the internet to go out. Yeah, it's too late now. Brackets. F of x equals the square root of x. It's the last function we'll do, and then I'll let everyone go. Well, I'll let the virtual people go, and we'll, we'll all stare at each other. <laughs> all right. Um, I'm be quick. For the boundaries. The domain, it starts at zero. Oh, by the way, y intercept is still zero. Yeah. zero. Skip the y intercept. They're not all zero, zero. So far, it has been. I know. See, that's his way. To see. The domain starts at zero. I can't put any negatives inside the square root. But then after that, it goes on forever. Oh, remember, they weren't all real numbers. numbers. They're all real ah. numbers. And x, as so long as x is greater than or equal to zero, you're good. I never. Oh, oh, I told you. Oh, I mean, how am I correct? You guys go. I'll just try to put my